All right, so in this video, we'll be making use of the Selenium package in Python, which is a web automation tool that will allow us to automatically navigate to websites and also to extract uh, and modify the data from those websites. So I'm going to show you exactly what we want to achieve in, uh, this is actually going to be a two-part series. So in this series of videos, we are going to manipulate the following website here. So the link to this website will be in the description. Uh, and what we want to do is we have a website here that has data. Specifically, it has a buyer name, a price, buyer name, price, all throughout the page. And this consists of, in this case, five pages of data that's formatted in a similar way for all of these five pages. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a script that will automatically open this website and extract this information from all of the pages and store the buyer name with the corresponding price and put that information into a spreadsheet. So in the first part of the video what we're going to do is just make sure that you have Selenium installed on your machine and just deal with one page. And from there, once we have one page down that's really the hard part, we'll go into modifying this code to have something working for multiple pages. So this website right now looks pretty stripped down and you know maybe this is very simple compared to something that you might counter um, with your own project but really the concepts I, I hope to be pretty transferable because the approach that we'll be using for this website will be applicable to lots of other websites that have you know you want to extract data you want to navigate to different pages so I hope that this is helpful to you uh, and ap applicable to you in various settings. Okay, so as I mentioned, we will be making use of Selenium, so we need to make sure we have that installed on our machine. And two things I'm going to assume that you have installed already uh, is Python and pip. Pip is Python's package manager. And if you don't have that installed, I'll leave links to both of those in the description below. Uh, but assuming you have Python and pip installed, you can use pip. I'll use pip3, but for you, if you just have um, Python 2 installed, you might just use pip instead of pip3. If you do have Python 3, feel free to add the 3 there. But I'm going to say pip3 install Selenium, and this will install the Selenium package on my machine. It's actually already installed, but I'm just doing this again. Uh, and the next thing that we'll need for Selenium to work on our computer is something called the Gecko driver. So the Gecko driver we can obtain from this website here. So I will leave a link uh, to this as well in the description. And if you navigate here and go under downloads, you see there's a number of zip or tar files for your operating system that you happen to be running on. So I downloaded this, um, this one for Linux since I'm running on Linux Mint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my downloads folder where I've downloaded this Linux tar2 and I've unzipped it and the result of that is this gecko driver executable and what we need to do now is we need to move this gecko driver into a location that Selenium will uh, look for since gecko driver is kind of a necessary tool that Selenium uses to crawl web pages so in Linux this is pretty straightforward if you're not on Linux if you're on Mac or Windows the directions for doing this will be a little bit different but if you are on Linux you can follow along with what I am going to be doing and that's basically just copying first I need to actually go into the directory that the gecko driver is stored at so as I mentioned before some of my downloads there's gecko driver I want to copy gecko driver to the following location and this is the location that Selenium is going to be checking to see if Gecko Driver actually exists. So I'm actually going to throw a sudo in front of this. And all right, so now that has been copied over to the appropriate location and we're ready to go. So I'm going to open up my text editor, which in this case is Sublime. And if you have Sublime as well, you can run Python internally. Uh, I have a video on how to do that as well. So let's just first make sure that Python, or rather that Selenium, is installed. So I'm going to type in from Selenium, import web driver. And if this runs, we know that we've done everything we need to do. So if you are in Sublime, you can hit Control-B, which will build the Python script that you're in. 
and we see this message here that says finished, which means that it ran just fine with no errors, there's no output, so we're good to go. So let's go back to the website and actually remind us what we want to achieve here. So the first thing that we want to do with our script is open up this website, and that's really the first thing that we're going to want to do. So let me go back to the script, and I'll put a, a comment here, open up a Firefox browser and navigate to the web page. And in order to do that, we're going to create a driver variable, which is going to be defined in the following way. So what this is doing is we're defining a, a, an object which essentially corresponds to a Firefox browser. And anytime we want to manipulate that browser, like open a web page or uh, extract data from the web, website in some way, we will manipulate this driver variable. So let me show you what I mean. So if we want to open the web page, we can say driver.git, which is a function that we can pass in a string that corresponds to a website. And the website that we give it is the website that it will open up. So let me go back, pop that in there. And now what we want to do, just to remind ourselves, is we want to extract the buyer name and the corresponding price. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to find this information through something called an XPath. So if, you, if you're on Chrome, which I recommend for this, you can also do this in Mozilla, but if you're on Chrome, you can right-click on an element that you want to check out and say Inspect. So I want to, in some way, grab this thing here. So I want to see what the website calls this thing or how it refers to it. So one thing I can do is I can right-click on this thing here in the source, and I can say Copy XPath. And the XPath will give me more or less what this precisely corresponds to and will allow me to extract just this thing. But we want to be more general. We want to extract essentially something with, within a div tag that has the title buyer name. So we want to in some way tell Python that, hey, this whole page consists of these div titles or these divs with the title of buyer info that we want to extract the contents within that div. So this is how we do that. So I'm just going to write out a comment just to keep track of what we're doing. We want to extract lists of buyers and prices based on XPath. So for buyers, we can set this, this is going to, we're going to get a list back which is going to consist of a list of all of the buyers on the page. And we're going to say driver.find elements by XPath. Now this is a function which is part of WebDriver, or Selenium rather, and you can find elements on a page by lots of different things, not just XPath. So you might want to find it by CSS, you might want to find it by some other type of um, tag. So there's in the documentation a number of find elements by something that will allow you to specify if the XPath isn't available to you. So in this case it is. So in here what we can put in is we can put in two slashes, div, and then at title equal to buyer name. So let me break down a little bit what's happening here. Really this precedes, these two slashes just precede any XPath. We say that we want this to be in a div tag and the title within that div tag needs to correspond to buyer name. So what I should do at this point, I'm going to comment out this line for now because I just want to make sure that these two lines are doing what they, sh that what they say they're going to be doing. So I'm going to hit control B just to take a step back. And if I do that, it opens up this web page because what we have in these two lines here is this driver opening up a Firefox browser and then this navigating to the website that we gave it there. So I apologize for taking a step back. Let me just close this for now and go back to our buyers list. So we have buyers. This now will consist of a list of all of the buyers on the web page that we've opened. So if I just print out buyers at this point, we should see here, once the Firefox thing has done its thing, a list of some elements. So we need to actually extract the text 
from those elements. But we see that the buyers list consists of these uh, Firefox web elements. So we'll go about actually extracting the, the text from those web elements in a little bit. But the other thing that we need to extract before we do that is also the prices. And the prices is going to be obtained in a similar manner. So if we right click inspect at one of these prices, we see that these are contained within a span and the class is equal to item dash price. So it's going to be kind of a similar way that we go about extracting the price uh, w with just replacing div with span and uh, title with class and also the contents of that with item price. Let me show you what I mean. So we're going to say driver that find elements by XPath. And then again, we're going to proceed this with two slashes, span, open square bracket, at class, equal to item price. So now we have two lists, which the, the prices list now contain all of the Firefox web elements for the prices. And what we want to do now is we want to uh, actually go through, loop through these objects here and print out the text that corresponds to the elements that we've so far obtained. So let's actually do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first put in a comment. So we want to print out all of the buyers and prices on, let's say, current page. So what the first thing we want to do is we want to know how many of these things there are. And in this simplistic case, there's the same number of buyers as there is prices because I'm sort of assuming that every buyer is matched up to a price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that num page items is equal to the length of buyers. I could have also said prices as well since I'm assuming these are the same length, but just for the sake of um, just for the sake of knowing that these are the, the same length, I'm just going to say length of buyers. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to loop over that length and print out the text contained at each of the elements that we've obtained. That's a simple enough loop. We're going to say for i in, we're going to range over the num page items. And I want to print, we're going to print buyers of i. And in order to extract the text from the ith element in the buyers list, we're just going to say dot text and I'll print this out so that way we have it kind of neatly. So I'm just going to concatenate a colon here along with prices of i.text. And then it's proper practice to once you've opened a web driver element to close it once you're done using it. So at this point we've opened the browser, navigated to the page, extracted some information, and then clean up or close browser once task is completed. So let me actually go and run this and we should see on the bottom here once the browser opens up a number of, let's see what's the issue here, we have something, what is going on? Uh, let's see, so we have this is okay. I think I'm missing a square bracket there. I think that might be my problem. Let me try and run this again. Sorry about that. So this is going to go there. We also have another error. So again, this is, um, uh, the quote is on the inside, so my fault again. So hopefully this should fix the problem. This is how you uh, go through debugging, and there we go. Anyway, <laughs> we've got the name and the respective price. And we have it for, at this point, only the first page. So in the next video, we'll be modifying this code to allow us to uh, extract the information from all of these pages. And then we're going to store the results of these uh, extracted information into a spreadsheet. So I'll see you in the next video, and thanks again for watching.